This is something known as, normally known as peyote stitch or sculptural peyote stitch. Originally the way the term peyote stitch was used was that it was a method by which people decorated their uh, religious uh, implements and their peyote ceremonies for their shaman or whatever. Um, like especially the Huichol people in northern Mexico. And uh, you know I presume collectors snatched up these religious implements and collected them and studied the beadwork on them it was probably then that they started referring to it as peyote stitch. But peyote stitch is a, a, a method of stitching beads together that's pretty universal. On these heads, I, there is a bit of math involved. I either start with, depending on the size of bead, um, 13 units of three or 15 units or three. In other words, 39 or 45 beads. I start with the eyes. The black parts are the eyes. And what I did was I just tied the tied these beads in a circle, went through three beads, and uh, I'm gonna skip over these three beads and add three beads and then go through the next three. So now I've got beads stacking up here. There's this one guy who told me, a glass worker, who told me that beads were the first form of purely enjoyment-oriented, uh, decoration-oriented um, artwork. In other words, people have used pottery to make beautiful things, but it originated as uh, a utilitarian, you know, it, it had a practical use, whereas uh, the bead is something that's been just purely for looks, actually even if it was attached to religious ceremonies or, or whatever. Beads also, just like a wedding ring, people in, in certain various parts of the world will wear certain beads that, that will definitely say, if you wear a certain outfit with certain beads, it means either you hit puberty or you're old enough to marry, or it means you're married and it could mean you're uh, your son is a warrior and stuff, so there's all kinds of uh, significance attached to what particular types of beads you wear and stuff. This is a... God, this is like a... Oh, it used to be a pin, but it doesn't have the whole pin back. But this is from the Czech Republic, and it's... It, I don't know if it was given to, like, a person in the space program, but it's it's like something that's um, clearly from like the Sputnik era. <laughs> These are beading needles that haven't put, been had thread put on them yet. I've got a bunch of different clasps in here and earring, little finding things. It's just like a handy deal. And then this is, um, oh, this Tibetan incense and this this is actually a giant bead and it's again this is like a wheel of fortune motif or whatever on a porcelain bead so I draw inspiration from um, lots of other like uh, art, visual artists and, and writers and music and stuff and uh, that's why I have like a, you know, a hot rod poster from the late 60s up there and uh, Robert Williams painted a poster of one of his paintings and um, oh this this guitarist and picture is uh, Dennis Tech of his band who founded a band called Radio Birdman in the 70s and uh, they're great or he's great I should say now that I've done the mouth um, I want the chin to jet out a little bit before I close up the bottom so I'm gonna mess I'm I'm bringing it closer in here but I'm making it widen out a bit before I bring it to a point Sometimes I have to prop up the 
bead that I'm about to go into to make it easier to get the needle in to the... Sometimes the beads kind of want to hide and make it hard for the needle to go in, so I'll like, take a thumbnail or a fingernail and move them into the right spot. <laughs> it's kind of wacky. I'm going to do the bottom part of the nose. And then I'll come back up through the middle part of the nose and do the nose nose. So now it's just a few a couple rows so that you get a forehead and then I'll do the same thing to for the top of the head as I did down below the chin there. Although I will start to into start to bring in smaller, narrower beads to prep it for the what they call the decreasing the decreasing. Some people some people like their beads either to be totally every bead exactly the same and squarish not these are like shaped more like bagels or donuts and I like for this for this type of work especially I like the ones that are shaped like bagels or donuts because they behave differently and you do get skinnier and wider ones which are very crucial for a nice sloping uh, sculptural movement it's kind of funny you're trying to make something that is somewhat amorphous and um, has movement in it out of something that's very, I mean, beads are hard, you know, it's like you can't squeeze them, you can crush them, but you can't squeeze them. And um, what you're dealing with with beads is that they're going to be, they're the size that they are and you have to work around that size. So you can work with that in the sense that you can purposely use size to create texture by pairing two radically different sized or relatively radically different sized seed beads together and um, with this type of technique you can really dial it in by selecting beads that are slightly bigger or slightly smaller than other beads of the same exact type. 